Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Thursday, March 23rd, 2017 edition of VR News. Going to start with a couple of game updates. Let's start with Abduction. So Abduction originally released for the Oculus Rift. Within the last couple of weeks, Cyan Studios, the indie devs behind the game, launched a Vive version. Well, reports have been coming in pretty fast and furious from a lot of those Vive users saying there are performance issues with the Vive version of the game. And they've posted those far and wide. There was a response from Cyan Studio CEO Rand Miller, which reads as follows. We are reading all comments. Like we did with PC and Rift, we will continue to update and optimize abduction for Vive. Being a small indie dev, we can test some combinations of hardware, but it's not until release that some issues show up. And uh, I can definitely agree with that. You know, as someone who did do hardware compatibility testing directly, that type of testing, we were confident we tested pretty much every variable, variable possible, but inevitably stuff falls through the cracks. So absolutely get that. But uh, I think they're going to be able to nip it. All right. Next game, Aceto Corsa Racing Sim 4 Vive and open source VR as of the 1.13 update that was just released. And it works via native open VR. So again, that's the Vive and the open source VR HMD now both able to run Aceto Corsa in virtual reality mode. Very cool. Now, this next story involves the Vive Tracker, the three-pronged tracker that we've seen a lot of the last couple of months. Uh, we know we can attach it to most everything. What we didn't know and just kind of assumed was you could do that with just the base stations, the lighthouses. You didn't require an HMD. Not so fast, says HTC. Actually, a user directly asked this question rather than just, you know, prolonging the assumption. And Vive responded directly saying that not at this time in terms of do you require or will you be able to do away with not having an HMD. Not at this time, they said, you do need to have the HMD to use the tracker or the controllers normally. So hopefully at some future point, they can figure out a way to relay that information just between the PC, the lighthouse, and the tracker unit. But for whatever reason, a lot of processing is obviously happening on the HMD, which at this point in time does not, does not make that possible. Next story, this one to do with an Oculus update and uh, seems to be the lucky number in today's news. It's another 1.13 update, this time the Oculus one, which like 1.12, which really did I just think, I think fantastic things with tracking. Um, I was one of those people who had some issues with 1.12. Tracking has not been an issue. Well, according to Oculus, they made further tracking improvements. Now, if I've tested something and it's pretty stable, and then I hear that there was further improvements, I always get a little nervous because what can happen is they end up with their further testing and further fixing, breaking things that were working previous. So hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully it simply just improves tracking that much more. I noticed the difference from when it was bad to 1.12. My guess is I'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between 1.12 and 1.13, but there are still people with issues. Hopefully this resolves it for those. All right, next story, a Sony patent, but a bit strange. So I'm going to have the picture up here, guys. Take a look at this. It looks like a person sitting on the couch looking at an object on a coffee table, except that object looks a hell of a lot like a PlayStation Portable or a PlayStation Vita. Doesn't look like a VR device. Now, a couple of uh, possibilities, and I suppose there's more, but let's go with two. The first being they've got the wrong picture in the patent, which 
That would be pretty bad. The second possibility is, well, let's go with three. The second is they're using a PlayStation Portable and a Vive somehow to work with virtual reality. I'm not buying that one though. The other is simply that the newer VR device that they're using for inside out tracking is going to be supported via a controller interface that looks a lot like a PlayStation Portable or Vita. Now, I can't see either of those pieces of hardware supporting VR currently because they're pretty outdated, even the Vita, in terms of processing power required for virtual reality. But um, we're going to have to wait and find out. Uh, we've said this before with patents. Doesn't necessarily mean anything is going to uh, come out as a result of that. Now, this patent was filed December 6th, 2016. So literally a couple of months ago. What's interesting is the creators for the patent are listed as George Wising, and he is still with Sony. He's one of the uh, senior designers. And Thomas Miller. And this is where it gets interesting. Thomas Miller left the company for Leap Motion back in February. And this filing comes 10 months after that. So very interesting that they would still attribute it to someone, and perhaps for legal reasons, that hasn't been there for 10 months. Uh, so maybe this is something they had been working on for a while. Either way, guys, it just adds to my curiosity. Now I really want to know what the hell this thing is. And hopefully we find out. Next story, an Australian man wants to set the world record for the longest time spent in virtual reality. Now, in case you're curious, the record belongs to a fella in the UK. His name is George Barrett. And he set that record for a show called The Gadget Show. So the Australian VR YouTuber, uh, his name is Jack McNee. He's going to be starting the streaming for that world record April 1st. But according to the writers, this isn't part of an April Fool's prank. He actually wants to beat the record. So he's going to start, yeah, April 1st. And then he has to last longer than 25 hours, 24 minutes, and 18 seconds. So that is George's current record. Now, what's interesting about that is my personal kind of longest has probably been about three or four hours. I probably have one longer than three or four hours, but I don't think falling asleep, you know, for an additional three, four hours with the HMD on my head should qualify me. I'm talking actual awake alert playtime. And that would be probably around three, four hours of Elite Dangerous. 25 hours, that is a hell of a long time to have that on your face. So let's see. Let's see if you can do it. All right. And the next news piece, this one concerns the city of London. It's a virtual reality dev meetup. It's going to take part in a couple of sessions. The first one is April 3rd. And that's going to be at Hackney House in London. And so that's basically one evening. It runs 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Price to get in is £7.50. So that gets you through the door, like I said, 6 to 10 o'clock. A second session is April 21st. And that's going to be developer and investor pitches. So most likely the devs pitching and then investors that like a pitch, you know, maybe offering to do some funding, investing, etc. So if you are a dev for VR and you happen to be in the UK and you can get to London April 3rd, uh, it looks like a pretty interesting session if you look at the agenda. And the last story, guys, Quark VR. This is another one of the wireless VR solutions. Uh, of course, we know TPCast. Then there was a device that tested back, which I believe was um, Quick VR in January at CES, which had a lot of latency. Not much is known about this one. It's a Bulgarian company that's created it. And likewise with TPCast, they claim two hours 
of battery life with their battery but uh, no idea on latency yet until we get to test it but it is their plan to launch that for Vive this year so if everything works out by summertime Vive owners should have a couple of decent wireless options but right now the leader still seems to be TP cast so we find out in the summer all right guys that is it for the news for Thursday you guys know what day it is tomorrow thank you blessed gaming Friday VR news edition cheers guys <laughs>